Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we're covering Mark chapter 3. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in truth and with clarity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so grab your Bibles. I'm reading from the New King James Version, Mark 3. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around, at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea and Jerusalem and Edomia and beyond the Jordan and those from Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude. When they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. So he told his disciples that a small boat should be kept ready for him because of the multitude, lest they should crush him. For he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to his him those who those he himself wanted and they came to him then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons simon to whom he gave the name peter james the son of zebedee and john the brother of james to whom he gave the name boenerges and that, that is sons of thunder andrew philip bartholomew matthew thomas james the son of alphaeus thaddeus uh, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And they went into a house. And then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Be uh, Beelzebub. And by the rule of the demons, he cast out demons. So he called him he, so he called them to himself and said to them in parables how can satan cast out satan if a kingdom is divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house is divided against itself the house cannot stand and if satan has risen up against himself and is divided he cannot stand but has an end no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house surely i say to you all sins will be forgiven, forgiven the son of men and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation because they say he has an unclean spirit. Then his brothers and his mother came and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him and a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my, mo my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my, my brother and my sister and my mother. Heavenly Father, uh, bless the reading of your word. And let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. If you're just here for scripture read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope it's means a blessing to you and I hope to see you again next time. If you're here for a more in-depth Bible study, stick around and, we're di and we'll dive right in. <laughs> Left off in Mark chapter 2 with Jesus going back and forth with the Pharisees about the Sabbath and His holiness. And so uh, we're just going to continue on because uh, chapter 3 starts with the word and, which is a clear alert here that we should go back because it's a continuation. Whenever you say and, anything, you continue on speaking about what you were previously speaking about. We have to recall that the chapter divisions and the uh, verse uh, numberings were all added later on so that we can find things in scripture uh, easily. So, um, uh, but in this original written work, it was written as all one 
uh, book. So uh, keep that in mind when you are reading and so that no one will, will lead you astray, telling you or taking something out of context to mean, context to mean something that it doesn't mean by um, taking a phrase out of its the larger work that it was written to uh, to me, to for his understanding, so um, and and taking it to mean something else to fit uh, whatever it is a false teacher may be teaching. So always have your Bibles ready and keep that in mind that when you when someone starts off with the uh, and therefore or and um, to go back a, a couple of verses or paragraphs and read and see what Jesus or what whichever book um, they're taking the scripture from whatever it's saying. If you have to read the entire chapter to get an understanding, then go for it. Don't be led astray. So it begins, and he entered the synagogue again. So it goes back in to the synagogue. And a man was there who had a withered hand. Uh, and so they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. These evil hearted people are just looking to see if he's going to break the Sabbath. He doesn't care how long the man has lived with the the um, debilitating hand. Healing on, is not a life-threatening disease, so he's like, well, it's not urgent, but should he go another day? Should he wait till Monday to heal? Uh, Jesus is like, don't be so unkind about thinking that that's what the Sabbath is, is made for. He literally just told them that man was made for the Sabbath for rest so that we can have rest, but it shouldn't be thought to, you can't do one ounce of work. You can do good on, 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 on Saturday or Sunday. Now, since we're celebrating it on a Sunday, uh, you can get your rest and, but you can still do good. Like if your neighbor comes and asks for something and you don't have enough, like, uh, but you have food, you can help them. Like you can, get, you can make the food and give it to your neighbor because they're starving. You know, you don't have to say, oh, you have to come back tomorrow. Like, no, do, do the good. Uh, and so, um, and he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Uh, sorry, verse three. Um, then he said to him, now forward, it is, uh, is it lawful on the Sabbath, Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? And, and when he asks them that question, they, the hardness of their hearts, they just shut up. They don't say anything back. They, they keep silent, it says. And when he had looked around at them with anger, he's like, Jesus is really like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Like, oh my goodness, but grieved by the hardness of their heart. So he's sad, but he's just like, I cannot, I can't with you guys. Uh, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And so he stretches his eye and he restores his hand as whole as the others. Important thing is that Jesus healed the man uh, and it, on, uh, on, a, uh, on a holy day. And then the next important thing uh, in six, because I was first, I was about to say the important thing is um, is what what is to come, but it's not. I, I wanted, I just wanted to po point out what they were about to do. But the important thing that was that, that Jesus showed the kindness and compassion when when somebody else wasn't, um, when these the regular church people weren't willing to do it by making up all these little laws within themselves. Um, so six, then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians. Uh, Herodians here. Or just um, Herod was the ruler there. So Herod the Great was the ruler back then. So these are Herod's little minions, the Herodians. <laughs> um, so then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. So their, the hate that they have is just insane. They want the Sabbath to be this day that they made, a law that they made, and all these extra rules that they added on themselves. Not... They don't care what scripture says and what Jesus is trying to teach and that he just healed a man in their sight. No, they're like, oh no, he broke the Sabbath. Let's go plot with the uh, Herod's little minions and see what we can do to destroy him. Crazy. So seven, but when Jesus withdrew in uh, with his disciples to the sea, so he goes to get a little bit of respite for himself. He needs some time by himself and his disciples. And a great multitude from Galilee. So all of these different uh, surrounding areas, they uh, they um, they come to Jesus uh, when they heard how many things he was doing. So they heard that word is spreading. All of these people are coming from all these surrounding nations, some Jews, some Gentile nations. And he told his disciples that, so he's got a, a contingency plan here. He's like, hey, all these people are going to come. And they're going to, you know, because they want to touch him just for the hill. And they're going to climb clean. So let's put a boat here because they're coming and they could crush me. Uh, and it goes on in 10 for he healed many so that many pressed against him with their afflictions and touch him. And uh, 
then Mark here tells us again, and the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, you are the son of God. So this is this is another time that Mark is telling us here in Mark's gospel. He he, he continues to tell us that that, um, that wasn't in the, uh, the gospel of Matthew uh, before. Um, they, uh, Mark is making an import, important point that they're falling down bowing down and crying out saying you are the son of God so even the demons and evil people know <laughs> uh, who the son of God is uh, well, well the de demons here but he sternly warned them that they should not make him known so he doesn't want it to be known at this point in time uh, who he is uh, because of the work that he has to accomplish on the cross so then uh, he went up on the mountain, called to him those he himself wanted. So this is the calling of all the 12 here. So earlier, Mark just gave us a brief uh, calling of the first four and gave us more uh, detail about that inner circle who was more closely surrounded to Jesus. Then he gave another uh, disciple uh, who he met along the way, um, Matthew a.k.a. Levi, the tax collector, but here he names everybody, including all those five, and uh, the one who will betray him, Judas Iscariot. So then moving on to uh, jump into verse 20, then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. So the multitude here is gathering around them. They can't even eat. They're trying to eat. There's so many people that they literally can't even eat. It's crazy. Uh, the crowds that come uh when you need a healing <laughs> but when you're just preaching yeah, i don't know uh seems like that there are a lot of the churches uh with false teachings they pack to the ceiling with uh promises of you know uh, wealth and health and prosperity uh but the ones that speak the truth of the lord and go through um the bible uh and just teach the truth. You know, it could be topical preachers who to, who, who preach the truth. I prefer uh, uh, expository just because they're teaching through the Bible. And um, I think that is a pastor's job. At, you're the pastor and you have the scripture of God and you want to teach it to the congregation. And you should be teaching through the, the, the scripture of God. Um, not telling me, don't forget, go home and read your Bibles. Well, then what, what are you, why, what, why did I come today? <laughs> if I have to go home and do this work and I'm just not, I'm not here for the show to hear what you, you know, want to talk about this to the topics of the day. Um, I didn't mean to go off into that. Sorry. I'm going to keep to the word here. <laughs> the multitude. So, so they can't eat so many people. 21, but when uh, his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said he is out of his mind. So his, his own people, it's like, oh, he must be crazy. Let's go grab him. He's, you know, got all these people following him. Uh, and uh, it is uh, believed that this is uh, his mom and uh, his family here. But it, 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 scripture doesn't say, but a lot of commentators say that that's who they believe that that is. That they're talking about there because uh, we know that his brother uh, James did not believe while he was still alive. But uh, he ended up becoming a believer and uh, wrote the gospel, the epistle, the, the letter of James. All right. So then uh, moving on to 22. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has uh, Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. So he called them to himself and spoke to them in parables. He's speaking to them in parable because they are saying that evil is casting, is, is, uh, it can cast out these demons. But Jesus is telling them Satan is definitely not going to be doing anything good to help the kingdom of God ever. Like his kingdom will not stand. If he did that, like evil people are going to be evil. Satan's job is to be, he is the father of it. That's what Jesus calls it. He said he's the father of all lies. He is, that's what he does. He's not going to turn against it. And then uh, when we back up to see where the demons fall out and, and cry, they are saying that he is the son of God. Uh, but for the, the but but for the first, he's to say that he's casting out, it, was, it says the scribes here uh, came down. And says that uh, he's casting them out by uh, Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And so, uh, and and then Jesus gives another parable about uh, if a house is divided against itself, uh, uh, an example, uh, 
that if a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. So if people in the house contend contending with each other, it, it, it won't work. Um, and no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. So surely I say to you, all sins will be forgiven. The sons of men and whatever blasphemies they may utter, but who you blasphemes against the Holy Spirit has uh, never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation because they has said he has an unclean spirit. And I'm going to go into and, and, and read from my commentary regarding the verse where uh, Jesus talks about the plundering of the um, the man's house. Uh, it's page 61. I'm going to read a brief excerpt from Dr. Sproul's commentary uh, on the book of Mark. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man and then he will plunder it. So Dr. Sproul says if a burglar wants to break into the home of a man who is stronger than he is, uh, the burglar must think of a way to subdue the strong man. He has to render him ineffective. He might choose to point a gun at him. He might drug him or he might have accomplices tie his hands. If he cannot counter the man's strength, strength he cannot plunder his home. In saying these things, Jesus was alluding to his own ministry, for he had broken into the domain of Satan and bound him, rendering him impo uh, impotent to pervert the plundering of his house. Jesus' power over evil spirits was evidence that he was not working by the power of Satan, but was working against Satan. And then I wanted to go on because I just love how he explains that way better than I ever would. Uh, uh, from the, the next verses, uh, 20, 28 and 29, uh, where the Lord um, is talking about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Uh, a lot of Christians concern themselves saying that, oh, I think I may have done this and I'm not walking upright. But I, I just wanted to read what what uh, what, what Dr. Sproul says is because I, I believe what he's saying um, to be true. Uh, I don't put anybody's notes or anything above uh of the lord and uh the the spirit the lord is capable of of revealing his, the truth of his word to me without um the extra notes but i find dr sproul to have been a a, a good servant of the lord so he says humans humanly page 63 Humanly speaking, everyone who is a Christian is capable of committing the unforgivable sin. However, I believe that the Lord of glory, who has saved us and sealed us in the Holy Spirit, will never let us commit that sin. I do not believe that any Christian in the history of the church has blasphemed the Spirit. As for those who are not sure they are saved and are worried they have um, they may have committed the unpardonable sin. I would say that worrying about it is one of the clearest evidences that you have not committed the sin. For those who commit it are so hardened in their hearts, they do not care that they commit it. Thanks be to God that the sin that is unpardonable is not a sin. He allows his people to commit. Amen and amen. So it's my amen and that I added to that. <laughs> um so just in case you were worrying if you committed that, I don't. Um, I agree with Dr. Sproul that our true believer um, is incapable. God will not allow us to commit that sin and blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Uh, we may have said some things that were pretty harsh in the days before becoming uh, saved, but I don't think that it, it is an impardonable sin if you're a believer. Okay, so moving on to verse 31. Then his brothers and his mother came, so his bro brothers and his mom, so that is a clear indication that Mary was not a perpetual virgin. After she gave birth to uh, Jesus, she went on to have other children, so um, uh, I know that Catholicism teaches that um, Mary was this perpetual virgin, but uh, if you are trying to minister to people in uh, the Catholic faith, you can use this uh, verse here to uh, help them to understand that um, it's, that's just not true. It's just not true. Mary had other kids. Her and Joseph went on and had other kids, girls and boys. So. Then his brothers and his mothers came and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him and a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. Okay, so yeah, upon checking um, uh, my notes and the Bible notes and the commentary, uh, they are saying that uh, when his mother and brother are, are there standing outside, then th that is probably a, reflect, uh, a reflection of when they said that, but his own people heard about this, that in verse 21, sorry, when it, but when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him for they said he is out of his mind. So now that they 
they said that, then they, we are going down to 31 and catching the, the identification of those people as, and that's why it's believed to be um, his mother and brothers, uh, because it says that his mother and brothers came standing outside and they're seeking to speak to him. Uh, but then we, we read on uh, what Jesus says, because they, they think he's mad at this point. Uh, but he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And down in, in 33. So, so sorry if I'm skipping around without saying it too fast. Uh, so 33, but he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat around him. And he said, here are my mother and my brother. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. So Jesus is declaring here that no one is more important than above the, uh, 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 of loving the lord with all your heart mind and soul uh when when we grow up we are we leave our mothers and fathers and uh if we get married we become one uh flesh but uh no nothing is more important than the than the will of the uh, of god it's not saying not to love your mother or your brothers but the more important thing is for him to sit there and teach the uh the word of god to to these people because that we're we're uh we're brothers and sisters in the faith that's how we communicate about each other when we're in the church your sister such and such and brothers such and such. these are our brothers and sisters within the faith faith um jesus is our, our ultimate uh big brother and god is our father um and uh that's how how uh chapter three ends and i'm sorry uh for stumbling there along uh in some of the teaching but uh i really hope it was a means of blessing to you as it is to me <laughs> uh thank you for coming to read through scripture with me uh and i uh, hope to see you again next time may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forever bye